I've been given this by Banggood. It's a Unity Professional Thermal Imager. Nice little thermal camera. This is for the purpose of review, so it didn't cost me anything, so thank you much Banggood for supplying it to me. And make sure you go check out the links down below from Banggood to, uh, to go to this one or any other ones here. But this is the top end model. It's the better one, which is why I chose it. This is quite a expensive one, this one, relatively, out of the range. But also, relatively, it's very cheap compared to other things that are on the market. It's actually a very good price. So I highly recommend you go and check this thing out. And I've been rather impressed by it. I'm very happy with my purchase, especially as it's free. So Banggood will usually supply me a discount code as well. So check down below in the description and click the Show More tab down there. Hopefully there'll be a discount code there too. I don't always get one, but sometimes I do. So it's worth checking down there. And certainly check down there for the links to this item anyway. So this is the UTI 260B. This is the model number. It's got very good specs. It's a 256 by 192 pixel imager. Shows on the side here. And it's got a couple of ranges. It's got two ranges it can work in. And you can choose which one you want to use. So you can actually um, narrow the range down, get more accuracy if you need to do the just the lower range stuff. So it does up to 550, but you can also lower it down to 150 degrees C as a maximum, and that gives you better results at lower temperatures if you don't need to go that high. So IP65 rated, do you know what that means? It's water and dust resistant. I might pop up a little thing up beside here, a little chart shows it, or something if I can find one. If I can find a little chart which shows what that means, I'll stick it up. So on the front here we've got two cameras, we've got an optical and an infrared, and we've also got some LEDs up here as well because of LED lighting. And on the front panel here, we've got the button for the LED. Turn those on and off. Power button, menus and stuff like that all in here. We've got playback for watching. We're looking at uh, previously recorded images and also the turnkey here. And you've got a trigger. If you want to click on that, you'll take a picture. There's actually different settings in there for that as well. It's got a standard mount on the bottom here for a camera. So if you want to put it onto a tripod, you can actually tripod mount it if you want to. or some kind of bracket like I've got here with stuff. Also got this rubber over here. Behind here has got a USB-C port and a micro SD card port. It comes with a micro SD card and a USB-C cable. Let's show you these. This is what comes with it. I've already used this and charged this thing up once. It came about probably 25% charge I'm guessing, something like that. Um, it took a couple of hours to fully charge it so it's got a fair bit of battery capacity in there but that was using my little bank so over here in the corner just see it in shot there, that green screen. Um, that's putting out two amps, the charger saying it took a couple of hours. So it's got USB and a standard USB-A port on there for the cable. It did come with that SD card as well, which I've already installed, which is a 16 gigabyte card it came with. I'll turn it on in a minute. And the manual is pretty comprehensive. It does tell you all the various features it has. It does go through each one. First part of the manual is in Chinese. And the second half of the manual is English. It is actually pretty good. It does actually detail stuff. It's got basic common emissivities of materials. So it can be handy reference. Um, there's a more extensive guide than this online, I'm sure. There's probably a big list, you know, web page listing everything somewhere. Go and have a look if you need to find something. But it's got all the various features in here. All the menus, it goes through each one, tells you what to do. Various settings, that sort of stuff. So it's not a bad little manual. You can also get this electronically online as well. When I post this to my Patreon supporters, I'll link the manual in with the Patreon post as well, so it's there as a file download. Right, I suppose we should turn this thing on. Alright, let's power it up. Now next to me over here, in this case, is my original thermal camera. I did a couple of videos on this when I first purchased this thing. I think it's about $180 US, something like from AliExpress, I think it was something like that. And it's only a 60 by 60 resolution. This is far superior. And this is only twice the price of this. Give me some idea. This is a much, much better camera, and it's only twice the price. So it's really good. I'll power this one up as well and do some side by side comparison and see what I can see. Now, this can actually do a focusing as close as 25 centimeters you can actually adjust it in steps of 25 up to a certain point then it's infinity i suppose for the camera alignment because you've got to what's your thermal camera and vision camera and you can actually mix them as well uh i think i'm in the right mode yes you can so i'm going to scroll right back there's the visible camera there the more visible visible light i can't remember what the resolution that was offhand i don't remember 
it's higher resolution than the thermal. It's in a manual, I'm sure. Right, so, and you can also filter it through and go all the way through to fully digital. And it will actually tell you as you do it um, the ratio you're in here in the bottom. So you can see how much it's being mixed by. Okay. But it's all got different um, color palettes you can use and stuff like that. And as you can see, it's got these cursors on the screen, which are set to the lowest and hottest points. And you've also got the crosshairs as well. And you can configure these things as you want as well inside the camera settings. So it's pretty good. So let's get a closer look at the actual camera, since we're going to be looking at the screen. So, torch, you hold that down for a few seconds. Apparently, I've never actually used it. There we go, it is on. But because my lighting's so bright here, you don't really see it, okay? So that does work. Playback here, which we'll get into, is the return key. So you push the middle button there for set, which will drop into the various menus. So you've got measurement options, palettes, point temperatures, so you can change that configuration, image modes, which is allows you to choose how you want to do it. I quite like the one I'm in right now, which allows you to filter through as you require it by pushing those buttons. And you've got general settings there as well. So let's go back to measurement. Tap into that, let's have a look. So you've got center spot, high low spots, which I've got, you can see I've got them both turned on. You can turn them more than one at once. Region of interest, and back to there again. So I've got those two turned on. So I've got a center spot, so I can focus on something which is up here. And that tells you that temperature. So I go to the next piece up here. There you go. It's really about 30 degrees or so up there. 31-ish, 30.7. Then we've got color palettes. So you have, was it seven palettes to choose from? So you choose this one you want to use. I'll stop handing shots so you can get an idea as well. I quite like the live one as well, but I think the iron is probably the best for the average temperature sort of scaling. This gives you a bit more sensitivity, I suppose, in the visual aspect. It seems alright. I mean, you can choose whichever one you want, I suppose. But point temperature. You can choose how many points you've got, what you're actually using. This is all selectable as well. But I've not got that used at all in mine. Image modes. So this is a fusion, which I showed you before. I could flick between natural settings here and you know, between each one. The very basic ones is straight plain thermal image, nothing else. You notice that the actual update rate is pretty good on this, but you do get moments where it like pauses for a second. Well, not even a second, but you know, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a second. You see, see that just occasionally there it'll do it. It does like a little calibration. You can actually hear it clicking at the same time. Otherwise, it's pretty good. Raw digital image, the fusion one, which is what I prefer to use. Picture in picture as well, so you've got digital image on that side and a thermal image on the center. So, if you just want to make it really easy to find exactly what you're looking at and point it there, you go, Oh, yeah, I want to look at that bit. You know, it's that's another way of doing it as well. Rather than fusion and alignment, they actually change the alignment position. So, let's count it half a meter. I was thinking of 25 for some reason, anyway, I don't know what. 25 must be somewhere else. So that's alignment between the digital and the thermal cameras. So I'm only about 30 centimeters away there, and even that's not too bad. All right. Um, you can see the actual images are slightly different sizes, but as you get further away, it gets more even. Half a meter, five, uh, one meter, 1.5, two, 2.5, and greater than three. All right, so I've got it at the shortest. I tip 0.25 from somewhere. I've got 0.25 from somewhere. Where's where have I got that from? Dunba. Settings. Lots in here. Languages. When you first turn the thing on, it will actually prompt you for a language when you first turn it on. And this screen comes up. When you first select it, or at least when it happened to me, I couldn't do anything else. It just showed this and then there were no prompts to go anywhere else. You couldn't get it back out of this screen. You powered it back down again, then powered it up again and it's just working fine. So I don't know whether it's just a initial setup thing like this. Um, I don't know. Anyway, date and time. Um, temperatures, units, you know, so degrees C or Fahrenheit, high low alerts, you can set these up as you want and you can set the temperatures what you want as well. So I've got this set at 90 degrees in my case, that's a nice temperature for doing electronics work because 
if it's getting up to that high you need to be paying attention to it and you also got low limits as well so if it's too cold it'll warn you too in my case I don't care if it's too cold temperature scaling high gain low gain this is where you set between the 150 degrees C or 550 degrees C maximum temperature so high gain means you're using 150 degrees as the maximum temperature low gain means you can do it up to 550 so because I'm not going to be doing anything above 150 I'm using high gain because you have much better um, accuracy linearity oh, maybe not linearity but granularity I suppose that's what I'm talking about um, in the actual temperature readings display brightness I'll just leave this as default medium I haven't tried these other actually high low yeah I think I'll leave medium actually as soon as my lighting auto power off you can choose which ones you want I think the default was 30 minutes when you first get it I'll put it down to 10 minutes I mean it's plenty it does actually say not to turn the thing on and off frequently it's something to do with probably these thermal sensors or something like that I'm not quite sure but it does say not to just keep turning it on and off it says it's best to leave it on for a bit instead and also it does mention um, in the manual if you if only just turned it on for the first time, maybe leave on for 20 minutes to acclimatise. If you've only just got it or something like that, or it's changed ambient climax or something like that, I suppose. It does mention that. You don't have to keep turning anything on and off. This one here seems to handle it just fine, but this isn't the same quality as, as this thing here. So 10 minutes is what I've got mine set to anyway. Um, USB mode, you can choose between USB disc or USB camera, so you can plug in the USB port on the top here. You know, it's feeding the camera image to a computer, so you capture it on OBS or whatever you're doing, you know. Maybe screenshots, that sort of stuff. You can maybe do that, I don't know. But there's some software as well you can use on Windows machines, which you can use with this camera. I think you can do remote control of it using that software. As I use a Mac, not a PC, I'm not even going to look at that part of it. At least not today. I may one day, next time I've got the PC out, the laptop, um, maybe I'll play with it then, but it doesn't really interest me that much. I'll be using a standalone camera. You can do it either way around. So if you move this up to the USB disk, when you plug it into the computer, this will just appear as a disk on the computer. So you actually probably get the images straight off it. Or you can use it as a basically like a webcam, I suppose. Measurements, distance, there we go, that's what I was looking at. That's where I got a point five from distancing it down here. So emissivity, I can I can never say this word. Emissivity. Emissivity? Oh, I, I, anyway, it's point nine five, that's like the standard value most cameras will use. And if you're measuring certain materials, you may need to adjust that to suit the material in order to get an accurate temperature measurement. Um, ambient temperature is measuring the temperature in here right now. And distance allows you to change what you can do. So 0.25 is a minimum. And you know, up to 4 meters, it says there. I guess that's to do with the accuracy or I don't know. Anyway, 0.25 is what. I'm going by because I'm going to be using this for electronics repair, so it's short distance work, so 0.25 is like as close as it's going to go, and that's probably what I need anyway. And general system settings, so device information, so the UTI 260B, 1.1.2, and there's the information about the SD card to set up. Factory reset, I'm going to do that, formatting the SD card, and auto saving as well. This is when you click on the trigger here. So if you click on the trigger and auto save is turned on, by default it's turned off. If you turn it on, you click the trigger, it will just take a picture. Don't have to do anything else, no other prompts. If you have that left as default, which is off, so or no, then it will actually prompt you on the screen, do you want to save this image, and then you can click yes. That's all the system settings stuff. Get back out of there. So, what do I think of this thing so far from the playing around? Well, you can see the resolution is pretty good. Right, there's an the exit clock up there. You can see each tube. That's pretty good right resolution update rates really good it's listed as being well it says less than 25 frames per second most cameras are only about nine sometimes even less than that so this update rate is actually pretty good you know that's pretty part of the time it pauses you can see it's actually fairly pretty good also a bit of lag but that's not actually that bad i'm going to compare it to this other one which i've had for a while i got this a couple of years ago and I actually leave one of the batteries out all the time because if you leave the batteries in, it goes flat in a matter of you know a couple of weeks, pretty much, maybe three weeks. Um, so I learned that one very quickly. Don't leave all the batteries in, or you've got to use it. And you find it's completely flat. So this one had a fault when I first got it with one of the, the um, circuit boards in the front here, 
and I've repaired that. I did a couple of videos on that at the time, so I may link in up here maybe, maybe down the description, link into the video for this thing, I did repairs on it. Because of this being faulty when I got it, I actually got it for half price. So that was pretty good, I was pretty happy about that. So getting the thing cheaply was a bit of a bonus, I suppose, but that's only because I fixed it, otherwise it would have been free. Anyway, let's power this thing up. Hold it on there. Okay. And I might have to dim these lights down so you can see a bit better. So it's booted up a little bit quicker. But if I point at next o'clock on this, you can see what this one can see. All right, it's just like blurry, not particularly good resolution. All right. So if I move closer and then zoom in a bit more, you can see it gets slightly better. Detail is not very good. So don't forget, this is a 60 by 60 resolution on the infrared. You know, it's just not that good. I might put my hand there instead. You know, I'll try and get it on here. And get it focused, that'd be good. So there's my hand in this one. All right. You can see it's really low resolution. It's okay. I, mean, I have actually fixed pieces of gear with this. I've used this camera and identified thermal faults with piece of gear. I did a video on a Fluke 6060B. I did a few videos on one of those when I was fixing it. I actually used this camera to trace back a fault. Oh, was it that one or was it... Um, it could have been that or my Kona T305, I can't remember now. Yeah, it might have been on that one I did it on. I found a, a, a hot chip on that. And I used this to find it. So it is usable, but as you can see, it's not great. Right? And you compare it to this camera. I mean, this gives you an idea, the quality, right? You can see all the detail, update rates, when it's not doing this little auto calibration thing. Alright? Massive difference. If I stick them side by side on the Nixie clock. Oh, I'll just click the thing. No. There you go. Both looking at the same thing. Look at the difference. Incredible difference. Alright? So, although this camera is twice the price of this one, what you're getting is a lot better than twice as good. <laughs> it's far superior. So one difference these two do have as well is that, I'll turn it off actually, I'm finished looking at things I like, is that this has obviously got a battery you installed, it uh, takes four AA batteries. This one has a built-in lithium iron cell, which you recharge through USB. Um, and this is obviously all rubberized as well, TPR, film plastic elastomer, or TPE, neither. <laughs> I think of TPR because thin plastic rubber, it's not rubber, it's elastomer. Anyway, so it's like all shock resistant stuff like that. It's supposed to be shock proof to two meters, I think. I saw that mentioned somewhere, but I wouldn't want to try it. <laughs> yeah, so if you're looking for a thermal camera for doing electronic work, for the price, this is brilliant. It's, uh, I think it's about 400 US now. It's only just come out of Banggood. And I started off, I think it was about 320, I think it was. Something like that, because it's an initial price, you know, it had limited numbers and stuff on like that. So I think it was about 320 and then went up 340, and then it was maybe it's 380, I can't remember now. Anyway, some of that. It's under $400 anyway, at least at the time when I last looked at it. For the resolution, for the quality, it feels rugged, it feels solid, it's heavy, um, it doesn't feel like a cheap thing. It's Unity, so some stuff's good, some stuff's not so much. This feels like a good Unity device. Some things have been good, like um, I've got my little clamp meter, Unity clamp meter, that's been excellent as well. You know, they're quite known for being good meters, so I guess it depends on the designers or which battery it comes from. I really have no idea. This is a good unit. So what I actually started out looking at was MJ Morton did a review video on a camera which came from a manufacturer, not Unity, someone else. They make the image sensors themselves, so they produce their own camera. And that's what he reviewed. And I just thought, oh, I'll have another look around, see if the technology has evolved enough now to make them more affordable. Because normally a camera of like this sort of resolution, you'd be talking, you know, a thousand dollars or more, easily, and makes them out of most people's price ranges. So I started looking around, and I saw this thing showing as a pre-release on Banggood. So oh, you know, it's going to become available soon. And the specs on this thing here, all the resolution specs, its frame rates, all, all the specs for it were identical to the one that MJ Morton reviewed. Almost as though it's using the same sensor as the other manufacturer is producing it with their cameras. So the specs are good. For the price, I thought, well, that's brilliant. And I was fortunate enough to have Banggood say yes to provide one for me at no cost. 
The price was so good in this, I would have bought it myself if Banggood hadn't given it to me. I would have paid for it in order to get one because when you're doing electronic stuff, having a thermal camera is a really handy tool to have. Um, I've used this one many times, but because the resolution is just a bit too low really and, and this focusing distance is also a bit too long, it's like half a metre to a metre, something like that, it's not wonderful and that sort of distance resolution is just not really there. Um, you have to use tricks like covering up things to figure out what, which bit is that's actually making the heat. <laughs> you know, yes, it's a camera, not good. This, on the other hand, complete opposite end of the spectrum. It's brilliant. I would definitely buy this. I would definitely get one. If you've got the money to buy one of these, go do it because you won't regret it. I mean, I've used this for, I don't know, I played around with it for probably an hour or so, doing measurements and stuff with it and checking things, and it's been really good. A great example actually in my house here, some of you may realise this, some of you may have been around at the time, but many of you wouldn't know this, but two years ago my house flooded, it had a big storm event and the sea all came in and my house was flooded, about a foot deep, up the walls, you know, that's quite a major issue, my house had to be renovated, but the builders I had, which were provided by the insurance company and sort of stuff, they were a little bit dodgy and what I found with this is it proved a suspicion I had that one of the rooms where the wall lining's got taken off because we have stud walls here. The insulation got taken out because it's wet, obviously. They didn't replace the insulation in the bottom of the two walls in that room. And this showed that really well. I can actually see that the top half of the wall, well, the top three quarters of the wall, were warm. Bottom quarter of the wall was cold because that's an exterior wall. So you can actually see the big temperature drop between the top half and the bottom section, which they had not put the insulation in. So you can actually see that. You can even do things like see the studs and the beams and the roof and stuff like that because of the thermal differences, you know. You can actually see those things which is really handy. It's quite amazing what we can do a thermal camera if you just sort of think about how you can use it and what sort of jobs you can do with it. For me, I'm going to be using it for electronics. But what I was going to say about this thing, it, it's a good camera. You can take pictures with it, you can hook up to your, your computer. Allegedly, I haven't tried it myself yet, I will actually be trying that at some point. And you can use PC software, I think it does Windows 7 to Windows 10, something like that, I think it could support. I highly recommend this camera. I'm absolutely thrilled with it. It's brilliant. You know, considering what this one cost me, and this is only twice the price, phenomenal difference. I wouldn't even touch this. If given an option, if you could afford this one, if you can't really afford this one, save up, get this one. This is okay if you're not really too worried about looking at much. As you can see, it's not great detail. Get that and get this one far better. So, here's what's on the back of the box, and it shows you the different models. So, you've got 85A, 165A, 220B, and 260B, and you can see the resolutions of each one. So, this one here is 80 by 60, the 85A, which is basically the same as this. This is a 60 by 60, so it may still be better quality. This is really isn't that, may still be better than that. But you can see here, these are, say less than 9 hertz refresh rates. And this one here, 260B, is less than 25 hertz. And you've also got these other options and stuff in here as well, which it lists. So make sure you have a good look at this if you're choosing a camera. You don't have to, so you have to get the top of the range one. The other ones may do what you want. These are still fairly good resolution. This is moderate resolution, a 220B, it's not too bad. But you might find a 165A will do you, but if you can get the top one, then get the top one. Because generally, when you spend that little bit extra money, you usually don't regret it. So obviously it's got these extra features here which make it a bit nicer as well. And resolution accuracy is 0.1 degrees C. Uh, response time, half a second, less than half a second. Or well, it says less than or equal to. It's basically half a second. Maybe, I think, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a second. Might be a bit less than that. And there's other stuff which I've already covered anyway. So charging voltage, 5 volt, 2 amps. Yep, indeed. So yes, I did see about pulling 2 amps out of my power supply when I did that charging. And it's got a 5 thousand milliamp hour battery so I said it took me two hours to charge it up and I thought it was about 25% full and that would make sense because it's putting two amps in for a couple of hours basically it does actually scale down as well so it starts with two amps and then it does start to drop towards the end so it's probably controlled battery life is his greater than six hours so that's not bad in itself image storage micro SD card or charging time says four hours so it took me about oh, at least two hours I think but say it wasn't completely flat anyway yeah so it's a good unit I'm very pleased with it. One thing I do wish this had though is a case, right? Because this case obviously for the other camera here, and this doesn't quite go in, it's a little bit too tall for it. You won't quite 
doesn't quite go. A bit of a shame because it would have been nice if this camera came with a little protective case because obviously you're not going to keep it in the box all the time are you? And you'll need to protect these lenses and make sure nothing gets scratched so that's one thing I do wish it did have was is a little storage case or you know this is like a belt clip one this one here which came with this cheap one it's just a shame it's not quite a little bit bigger it's a shame you may be able to get them later date with cases like that or maybe you can buy them as an aftermarket thing I imagine you probably could or you maybe get some other kind of bag and put it in that because you want to protect it you don't want to scratch the lenses up I don't know what else can I say about this thing it's brilliant thanks Banggood for sending it to me go and check the links out down below I thoroughly recommend this camera it's brilliant after having this thing which I've used in videos and used it to fix things. You'll be seeing me using this thing in, in videos. I mean, there's a lot of times I wanted to use a the thermal camera to check for faults on, on bits of gear, but because the resolution this is wasn't good enough, it wasn't really worth digging it out because it just wouldn't do the job, really. This one here will do the job, and it's got enough detail and accuracy to be able to pinpoint things. So you will see me using this thing in future videos as well. I can guarantee it. It's brilliant. As I said, I think I said it once or twice. It's brilliant. Go buy it down below. Use my link. Make sure you use my link. Don't use any other link. My link down below. Okay, because that will probably give you discount codes and stuff as well. As I said, if Banggood give me a discount code, it will be down there with it. You just have to type it in like the checkout phase, something like that. Um, at the very least, if I use no discount code, buy it through my link anyway, because I get an affiliate sponsorship with them and I get some earnings from that, which helps me to buy more items and help find this channel and that sort of stuff. So. It's always very helpful. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. That's a cool clock. Thank you for the person who sent it to me. You know who you are.